Hello everybody, it's Noah here from Audio Cube, and today I'm giving you a new video on the latest update. Well, I've been working on this for about three months solid since February, and I haven't really released anything since. So this is a pretty big update, and there's a lot to cover. So I'm just going to get stuck straight in, I'm just going to run through everything that I can remember. I will probably miss some stuff, so make sure you download it for yourself off the website. And yeah, so first thing you'll notice is there's a new login screen here there's some preferences where you can choose if you're using a custom library folder uh, if you want to use a custom library just click here and then paste in your directory this is because some people have had issues storing on their C drive we've got a uh, interface scale which you could also zoom in with command or control and plus and minus and then you can also choose your color theme, which you can also just switch through with Control and T. So we'll go for this one, which I've been enjoying recently. Uh, and once you've signed in, you can check this and then it will actually skip the whole login screen every time you log in. So yeah, this update is pretty big. There's a lot to get through. Um, a lot of what I was working on was sort of to do with the foundations of the engine. Um, because obviously I've been building audio cubes since way before I even knew how to really program and now that I do know how to program I realize there's like a lot of really terrible code that needed to be redone so it's been a lot of like working out the foundational stuff um, but that means that the next updates I'll be able to focus on adding more features that said I've still added a lot of cool features so you, you can see one of the first ones is the new project screen which you can now like navigate just with uh, your arrow keys and we have a bunch of buttons down here for picking which folder I'm not sure if you're going to see this pop-up but there's a pop-up here uh, for picking a folder from my computer to let me choose the f uh, save folder location you can click this to open the current folder in your file explorer or this to choose the default and you've also got this to sort your projects alphabetically or newest, which I like to do. And you can also just search through them here. So shall we just start by loading in a new project? Uh, loading in a saved project so you can just instantly see some of the stuff that I've been working on. So first of all, you'll notice that the connection lines are looking a little bit different. which can be toggled up here. I quite like the gridded variation. Uh, so I'll just stop this. So now we can and you also got this button which just stops everything. Uh, yeah, a lot of things are the same. Mix is still the same the general bits of the editor are still the same. We do now have an undo function. Uh, it's probably best to just show you this in a new project. So you've now got undo, so you can just move this and then undo. It's a little bit temperamental, but it does get most of the job done. We've also got some new selection stuff so now when you're selecting devices you can see which devices are selected in here which just gives you a bit of a better indication yeah you'll notice that a lot of things have moved around so I basically tried to make the interface just a little bit tidier and easier to use so now most of the windows and panels are opened up here this is kind of your master uh, panel bank so you've got the editor rack where you have your device rack and then the main editing interface you have the timeline which is looking a little bit nicer now uh, you can open up the more advanced bits in here and then we have the browser which is working exactly the same there's a few more buttons down here for um, opening various locations on your computer or installing the sample pack uh, the 
mixer is up here. I mean, there's also a lot more keyboard shortcuts, which you'll see now linked in the tooltip. Got the audio range editor, which lets you edit the range of sounds like so. Uh, the record window for recording your audio output. And then the master volume rack uh, knob up there. You can now save your project just by clicking up here and then enter oh, uh, backslash in there, which you wouldn't like. You can pick a custom folder to store your project in or just use default, which is what I normally do. And it will save it like so. And you can press Control O, not Command O if you're on Mac to open up your projects and then just load in like so. Now some of the more exciting features, uh, well the, the add devices is up here and now there is a bunch of shortcuts. Ooh, I pressed, I've been using uh, Windows so I'm a little bit, okay that's a little bit big. But yeah you can just add devices and it just makes it a bit easier to uh, use the keyboard rather than having to drag them manually like this. Uh, let's undo some of this just to see. Okay, not all of that's worked, but yeah, the undo is a little bit buggy. Uh, another cool feature is the terminal, which you can just open and close by pressing backslash. Uh, you won't have this little thing in the way here, uh, it's just from screen recording. I can help I'll show you everything it does. Press control shift and up or down to, uh, and then you can scroll through like so, and you can pretty much do most of the functions in here. So list projects, we'll say, uh, project. Then you have to press Y again to confirm. It should work. So I can't remember what this project was. Uh, it doesn't seem like it was fully finished. So probably the n most exciting new feature, which I should have shown first, is the new motion editor. So let's pick something here. Let's go for piano. So let's just get this looped. So you may remember the original uh, motion or animation thing from here where you could uh, record manual things like so. But now I have now added this uh, sort of preset thing. So delete the path, select a motion type. Let's go for figure of eight. And then you can either trigger it from here, uh, from the timeline, or uh, you can just do it on its own like this. And you can change all kinds of, oh, that's in the wrong one, uh, parameters. So one handy thing when you're working on this is we will turn off the distance which is now removing the need for any kind of distance um, simulation and if you just press Control F you're now going to follow the device uh, and get some different kind of you can still move around um, obviously this is going to, as you're constantly looking at it, it won't have the sort of stereo effect. So yeah, there's a bunch of 
stuff in here. Yeah, maybe we'll turn distance on. So yeah, I mean, it's just a bit fun to play around with. Uh, you can reset the center point just by clicking that. And I do quite like the random uh, random path, which will just oh, didn't select it. Go in random directions, which is quite fun. And yeah, another tiny improvement to show you is the sound wall editor. So it now just has a bit of an easier editing system compared to what it used to. Which makes it a bit easier to edit. Um, I think that's most of the new things to show you. It's kind of a lot of little improvements that have just added up to being just making it a bit smoother in general. Um, but yeah, the new motion stuff is a lot of fun to mess around with. So you can have uh, as many sort of different devices as you want doing as many different paths as you want. Uh, quite again from top down for you. But yeah, these work with all kinds of. Uh, well, they w the motion it works with sound generating devices, so uh, emitters are quite fun to use because they just sort of put out their little bouncy ball sounds. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna get properly stuck into making a project now, but it's just quickly showing you the different kind of stuff it can do. Yeah, logic boxes, these are still one of my favourite uh, things to mess around with. Especially with like, the new animations, it's quite fun. So you can stop it from uh, here, and then just clone this. Uh, yeah, just having a little mess around. So yeah, that's kind of a, uh, kind of a decent summary of the latest features. Uh, things have moved around a little bit. I am going to update the user manual soon to explain everything and I'm probably going to make a couple more videos but yeah this is basically the uh, shows you all the new features 
so I do recommend you just go and get stuck in and start trying it out for yourself. And then, yeah, when you're happy, you can just record or you can even visualize to see how the acoustic waves are bouncing. Uh, but yeah, let's just record this. yeah let me know what you think uh just hope you enjoy the new update probably missed a bunch of stuff um but yeah just explore reach out to me oh yeah color themes you can create your own custom color themes now uh all you need to do is go on um if you open, click open folder, uh, and then go to the color theme folder, you'll then see a template, uh, color theme.txt, and you can just enter in your own values and set the color theme how you like. So yeah, that covers it for today. I'm gonna make some shorter videos. I'm probably gonna try and make some videos on each of the more uh, individual topics. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys. Let me know if you have any questions and enjoy using the new version. See you later.